Hello church family and uh, my fellow members of the men's group. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so bear with me. Uh, I'm a little nervous, a little inexperienced with this, kind of, this type of stuff and uh, put this off for a while because I didn't know how to do this and I had to have my son <laughs> help me with this. And, and had to use his phone because his phone's a whole lot better than mine and uh, and he knows more about this than I do. But I'm gonna be reading today from James, first chapter. And I'm gonna begin with, uh, I'm gonna begin with the fifth verse and read through the eighth verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave on the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the lord a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That doesn't mean you're not free to change your mind. That doesn't mean that you're not free to have other opinions. Um, we all change our mind about things. All of us change over the years through our, throughout our lives from uh, the top foods we eat to the clothes we wear to the TV shows we watch. Um, we have free will, no matter what some people may tell you. Being double-minded really doesn't mean changing your mind with your kids, although that can play into it. In context here, what this means is when you ask God for something, go all the way on your end. Don't ask God, don't make, try not to make deals with God. That's not how it works. Do this unwavering, as it says in verse six, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave on the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And what that means is if you're gonna say you're gonna do something at church, or if you're gonna be um, a witness for Christ, don't have to do it. Don't be double-minded. It's dangerous to be double-minded. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, don't act a certain way around your Christian friends and then act a certain way around your worldly friends. Don't split, don't try to split the world in half, your world in half. Uh, don't praise the Lord on Sunday morning and go out drinking and partying with your friends on Saturday night. That's kind of what that. That's what. That's what I, the way I take it too. Um, being double-minded is a dangerous thing. And as it says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You're not just unstable in your faith. You're not just unstable in your commitment to Christ. You're not just unstable in your witness. You're probably unstable at everything else in how you spend money, how you uh, spend your time, things you watch, things you uh, do, places you go. Don't, don't be double-minded. Don't be, don't try to play burn the candle at both ends. Is the old saying is. It's something we need to do. We need to choose to be Christians and live that life. I knew a man, and I've worked in several places in my professional career, as professional as it could be. But I knew a man, and a uh, very hard man to deal with, very hard man to uh, work for. He was very stern, uh, he had a very quick temper. He was not the friendliest individual you could ever meet. I never personally had any problems with the man because 
the way I work and the way I am, I get along with just about anybody. If you can't get along with me, something's wrong. That's just how it is. But he was a hard man. He was challenging to work for. He really was. And a lot of people didn't like it. He was a drinker. He was a, a womanizer. And he was proud of both of those things. He, he would brag about it. He died a few years ago. And when we saw his obituary in the paper, none of us knew him. He was on the deacon board. He was a Sunday school teacher. He was over the benevolent fund at his church. He was a volunteer at a food bank. None of us at work knew him. And no one at his church knew him either. That's double-minded. Don't be double-minded. If you're going to choose to be a Christian, be a Christian. Follow the Lord. Follow the teachings of God. And more importantly, follow this book. And read this book. Put its words right here. And I'm just as guilty as anyone else for not reading my Bible enough and praying enough. It's the key to not being double-minded. The best way... The best defense we'll ever have is to stick by your convictions. If it's not right with this book, if it doesn't go in line with what God says, we don't need to be a part of it. And if we ask God for something, mean it. Don't just meet him halfway. Go all the way with God. You'll never fail. I hope this has been a little bit of a, a blessing to you today, if nothing else. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer now. And... Uh, Hopefully I did all right. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day and thank you, Lord, for this time and the opportunity to share this word with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, use us in a mighty way. God, speak to us. Help us to adhere to your teachings. Give us the desire to follow you. Give us patience. Lord, give us discipline. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Thank you much, so much for watching. If this turns out pretty good, I may do it again sometime.